What was your creepy unexplained experience as a child? Haven't told this one in a while. I was young, five to seven, somewhere in there. I was sleeping in between my parents for whatever reason. I woke up, I remember the clock reading around 4 am there was something standing by the window, looking out into the front yard. It looked like a man in a brown wool robe, about 6 feet 4 inches or so. I started to stir and sat up in bed, and the thing turned and looked at me. Dear God, that face. Extremely pale white skin, lots of really pronounced wrinkles, and the face drooped like it was melting, down into a really pointy chin. Almost similar to a scream mask but with all of the features of a living being. Its mouth was hanging open and its eyes were wide, almost like it was worried or frightened. It kept its gaze on me while it moved away from the window, in front of the bed, and out the open bedroom door. The second it exited the room, the lights turned on on their own and both of my parents jumped up on either side of me, breathing heavily like they'd both just woken up from a nightmare. To be clear, I was fully able to move during this, I don't think it was sleep paralysis, but I'm not sure what it could have been other than some kind of demon or really fucking ugly ghost. I've never seen it since, but I can still picture it clear as day. I had an experience, which may or may not be similar. When I was 5 to 7 years old, I lived in a huge rural house in South Korea. The house had a courtyard, and the street outside was barely lit. It was night time, and I was the last one to get the groceries out of the trunk. I walked through the gate, locked it and walked to the front door of the house. Suddenly, I got this chill that ran through my spine, and I turned backwards, instinctively. I can't really explain what I saw. It was a glowing bright blue human-shaped figure floating in the middle of the courtyard and it was slowly floating closer. I got this jolt I'm pretty sure is associated with primal fear, I wrenched open the door, locked it fast, ran to the living room, and played with my Lego like nothing was wrong. That night, I had a weird dream. My mother was missing, and I was looking for her in desperation. I found a door embedded in a hill. Something was off about the door so I opened it. It blasted open and hellish things poured out of it. I'm talking like Silent Hill level shit. It may not be creepy typing it out, but the memory of that night is burned into my mind. My mom was fine when I woke up. On a side note, I'm also very prone to sleep paralysis. I have episodes where I wake up in sleep paralysis three to four times a week that last a month. Then I'll be free for half a year or so. My friends joke that I'm haunted. Ha ha. I was out at our cabin in the remote mountainous wilderness of Colorado with my dad, and had to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. This necessitated a flashlight and shoes, because the outhouse was far away. There was no one but me and my dad for miles in any direction. So I thought. I suddenly heard voices in the distance and stopped in my tracks. It seemed to be coming from my right, deep in the woods in the middle of nowhere a quarter of a mile from the road. Being eleven and unafraid of the world, I foolishly yelled who's out there? There was silence for a few seconds, then a shouted string of profanity so vulgar it terrified my virgin ears. I stood stock still for a moment like a terrified rabbit but heard nothing else, so I ran back to the house and woke my dad up. He got up, loaded his gun, and turned all the lights on, but we never heard another sound. To this day, we have not seen or heard another person within fifteen miles of the cabin. My mom put me to bed in my room but I woke up downstairs. I thought it was a dream but some man picked me up when I was almost asleep, carried me downstairs and put me down on some blankets between a sofa and chair. I was quite young so my parents still had a safety gate. My dad wasn't in, worked nights then, and my mom was asleep so no one knows how I managed to get downstairs. I can still remember this now, strangely. Similar story here. I remember one night my parents tucking me into bed and I remember falling asleep. I even remember waking up from a dream laughing that night. It was a good dream. But some point after that I woke up in my backyard laying in my shed. The creepy thing is we had an alarm system that would make a loud ring whenever a door opened in my house. I never heard it go off and neither did my parents or siblings. It was impossible for me to get out of the house that night without waking up my entire family. My family was quite shaken by this and it scares me till this day. When I was a child, my grandparents' house always creeped me out. I was terrified of the basement, and there was something off about the rest of the house. Once when I was ten, my mom and I were sleeping in my grandpa's bed. I couldn't sleep and I was facing the middle of the bed so the back of my head was near the space between the bed and the wall window. 
All of a sudden, I feel something poke the back of my head twice. I was petrified and froze so I never turned my head to see what was poking me. To this day I don't know what could have happened but I can still feel those pokes. My grandparents, mom's side, house was creepy because of how it was built. There were plain brick walls inside, and the halls were super narrow, as were the doorways. I used to have a recurring nightmare where I was slowly walking down the stairs to the basement, and as soon as I hit the concrete floor, I'd jump awake in typical I just died in my nightmare fashion. I have no clue what it was supposed to mean. The house was torn down a few years ago, but the basement is still under the dirt somewhere. I was young, maybe eight. Just so you know, I always go to sleep in my bed and I'd never, ever fall asleep on the couch. My grandpa died and we got back from his funeral. That night I went to bed, in my room as usual, but I woke up in the middle of the night on the living room couch. When I looked up, I saw my grandpa's ghost. It wasn't scary or anything, at the time it felt natural. He didn't say anything but there was this understanding between us. I went back to my room and went back to sleep. I would have assumed it was a dream but it was so vivid and real that it stuck with me for years, especially since I woke up on the couch, which made the moment stick out even more in my mind. It wasn't even a I saw a ghost. Moment it was just a weird vivid memory that seemed so normal at the time that I didn't think anything strange of it. When I was about 20 I told my mom that story and she said was it the day of his funeral. Because I saw his ghost that night too. That fucked my shit up. When I was little, I had one of those mini mouse plushies, with the cute costume and the big open mouthed grin. I even had a studio portrait taken with it that turned out beautifully. Well, I woke up one morning, and was just lying in my bed, looking over the edge of my bed at my toys scattered on the ground. All of a sudden, as I was looking at my mini doll, it started talking. It made almost a hissing noise, then it started whispering my name. Frozen, I watched as the doll's open mouth slowly shut. I ran out of the room as fast as my little feet would carry me. My parents dismissed it as my imagination. Until I showed them the doll's permanently closed mouth. We went back and looked at the studio portrait. That doll's mouth had been open. It would not come apart now no matter how hard we pulled. I don't know what happened. Maybe I'll never know. But I didn't touch that doll again. It wasn't as friendly looking with a closed mouth. Edit, lots of you are asking to see the studio portrait. It's at my mother's house. I'll have to stop by and get it. Hang in there. Used to live in a shady part of Indianapolis, in the same house where my mother grew up. We lived by a wooded area, not very vast forest but thick until it led out to some fields. I have many peculiar tales from the woods. Here are the most memorable. I had a friend over, when I was in about third grade. She and I considered ourselves professional survivors and trained ourselves for a zombie apocalypse out in these woods. This girl was also a horror movie junkie. We were out in the woods, when we heard a chainsaw. Nothing to be alarmed about, this was a nice fall day and people were probably tending to their yard. Then I realized we are in the middle of these woods, and the chainsaw noise is coming closer. We noped out of there pretty fast. The second was with a different neighborhood friend, and we were exploring when suddenly we smelled something rancid. We looked down and a huge mound of dead fish was sitting in a clearing, with a few dirty paper plates and plastic forks scattered around. Later that day we found bags, and in the bags were a large variety of possum bones. Finally was the time we found a dead body at our school, which had a track surrounded by thin woods. We were walking around the track for gym, when I turned and saw the body. I can't describe it as human. It had blue skin, and bulging black eyes. It was half buried in the mud, facing me, with an egg-shaped head. I noped out of there, and turned back to see a group of kids gathering around and our principal peering through the trees. We were rushed back inside. The police were called, but the next day the body was gone and no investigation was taking place. I grew up in rural Scotland in the 80s and 90s. Think 50 kids total in my entire primary school, rural. There were only four kids in my year, one being me so only three classmates. I was told that before we moved into the house I grew up in, the previous owner died of old age in our living room and they lived in my bedroom before that. There was some kind of raised wooden floor built for them to live die on with the bed that was taken out when we got there. Two spooky for me events as follows. I don't remember this but my mum claims she couldn't find me when I was a toddler and later found me in a closed drawer in my room. 
No idea how I got in there and no idea how it was closed. I have a distant memory of seeing a dog-like ghost running in place in broad daylight in our living room. Mum had me hide behind behind the couch with her suddenly because the coal man was here to collect money we owed him. We were extremely poor and had a coal fire to keep us warm in winter, but I didn't know why we were hiding at first. I peeked into the living room from behind the couch and saw what was like a standing shadow but it was made of light running on the spot in front of the fireplace. It was like a dog running really quickly but it was running in place and suddenly switching side to side every few seconds like it's glitching out. I thought that was why mum had made me hide behind the couch. I got scared and went and stopped looking into the living room, hiding behind the couch fully again. It stuck with me as a WTF was that I saw moment but seeing as I was barely primary school age back then I can't really give it any real weight as paranormal evidence to myself. My room had a lot of things fall over in it that shouldn't and never with anyone there to do it. Every now and then we'd hear a loud bang come from my upstairs room while we were all downstairs and something had fallen over. Usually small things like books, games etc but I had a mirror smash from falling on the floor. The worst was my entire wardrobe fell over and broke my bed. The wardrobe was really big and heavy and shouldn't have been able to fall forward on its own like that. Scared the shit out of us all from the boom alone. Thought we had a robber up there. A few family members told me they thought I was in my room and were surprised to see I wasn't because they saw my door in the later stage of closing as they went by as though someone had gone in. There and had been closing the door behind them and a family member saw the last seconds of the door moving to a close. I never witnessed this but it was unsettling to hear about. I remember that when us kids were left in the house alone, which happened fairly often, we'd hear very audible footsteps and banging coming from the rooms upstairs but it usually came from my bedroom. I had sleep paralysis a lot when I lived there. I'd scream really loud and freak everyone out. Typical sleep paralysis episodes I think I'm awake but I can't move and it's like something evil is in the room with me with the intent to kill me and I have to fight it off or I'll die type. Feeling. If you've never had one feel lucky, they fucking suck. If I went into detail over what I saw and felt during sleep paralysis this post would be a lot bigger so I don't want to. Every now and then a really, really loud bang would wake me up. As though someone had wrapped their knuckles on something wooden near my head with a lot of force. This has followed me everywhere since but doesn't happen as often. I think it's exploding head syndrome but it's still not a nice way to wake up. Bonus 3 Spooky 5 Me My stepdad and mum both had the same dream that they were abducted by a UFO. My stepdad was telling my mum about this crazy dream he had that a UFO came and the roof went see-through and he was taken aboard. Mum went pale and said she had the same dream. My younger sisters shared a room and were both freaked out and said that they'd woken up to their blankets on the floor and thought it was ghosts. I didn't have a UFO dream or wake up with my blankets off of me so hey I guess my haunted bedroom saved me there. Super bonus story when I was a young teen I was at this tiny river beach with a good friend of mine late at night. Drinking by a little campfire we made because it's Scotland and that's what we do. We were waiting on another friend coming. We were having a laugh talking about shit when we hear these very heavy footsteps come towards us. Cool, we thought, it's the friend we're waiting on but he never appears. We think he's fucking with us so we call out his name but no answer. We get up and wander out into the darkness and can't see anyone. Literally seconds have passed, no way in hell anyone was right there then left in the time without us hearing or seeing them. We still think our friend is fucking with us and we decide that he must be hiding a bit further down the trail to get to the river. We actually walked all the way back to the start of the trail a good quarter mile back from the river where we meet our friend now only just arriving on his pushbike with no clue what we're on. About when we tell him that was a good joke. I'd swear blind someone was right next to us, we both heard it. Doesn't help that the section of the river we were drinking on has stupid Scottish folk legends about a stupid ghost who haunts it because they drowned. I don't believe the ghost story but do personally know of people who have actually drowned in the river. I left home a long time ago now and things like that don't happen anymore except for still having sleep paralysis episodes and a loud bang waking me up from time to time but by far less than when I lived at home. Surprisingly I'm actually fairly skeptical about the paranormal. It does interest me but I think that most things can be explained rationally. I was a weird kid and slept with my bedroom lights on all night long. So from the outside I guess my second floor bedroom was lit up like a display case. I wasn't scared of the dark, just preferred it that way. 
One night I awoke to a metal scraping sound outside, like something heavy being dragged. I heard a hard thunking noise against the wall outside my window and then someone climbing up a ladder. I watched, wide-eyed and frozen in fear as a man I'd never seen looked straight at me through my window. Our eyes met and we just looked at each other for a moment. Then I closed my eyes and pretended to sleep, but I was really squinting and watching him. He just stared at me for a few minutes, then I saw a bright camera flash. He climbed back down the ladder and dragged it away. I never saw him again. A year or two later I was on a road trip with my dad. I think we were in San Diego, a few states away from home. We were staying high up in a hotel room with a balcony on probably the 20th floor or so. My dad and I had our own beds, mine was nearest the balcony. At some point during the night a bright flash woke me up, so I opened my eyes and sat up in bed and looked out. Didn't see anything. Then another flash hit me full on and that's when I saw the outline of a person holding something, a camera, apparently, tucked down beyond the edge of the balcony to somewhere below. Again I was frozen in fear, laid awake most of the night just terrified and staring out at the balcony. Never told anyone and nothing like that ever happened again. But after the second time I had very vivid recurring nightmares about being abducted and forced into a child sex ring and never seeing my family again which in itself is really fucked up since I must have been 8 years old at the time, was never abused and generally had a great childhood. How did I even know that child sex rings were a thing? But I had these dreams, sometimes every week, of being forced to have sex with other children while men watched and recorded us. I don't think my little kid brain even knew how awful that was at the time. The most terrifying thing was that these dreams were only hours long but they seemed to last for weeks or months at a time and I could remember the other kids' names and faces and everything. I grew up on the central coast of California, and my family would frequently visit Big Zua for camping, hiking, or just hanging out and having lunch at one of the restaurants. I must have been about seven. Old enough to visit the bathroom independently, but still rather new to the freedom of walking around somewhere that wasn't my neighborhood or the woods alone. I went into the bathroom at a restaurant called the River Inn, and there were three stalls one handicapped, and two regular. All but one of the stalls a regular one, were taken. I distinctly remember looking under the doors for feet, because I was a little kid, and for whatever reason preferred the handicapped stall. I saw no feet, but the doors were locked. Whatever. I went into the one open stall. There was a huge fucking squid in the toilet. Like, the body had to be at least a foot long, plus tentacles, coiled around the inside of the toilet bowl. It totally filled the available space. Cloudy dead squid eyes, gazing up at me from the pooper. I ran out of the bathroom in horror, told nobody, and held my pee for the 45 minutes drive home. What the fuck was that squid doing there? All I can surmise is it was a line cook prank, in an area that ubiquitously has squid on the menu. 25 years later, that turret oil at squid still haunts me. So a friend of my family is very wealthy, and has a big house that we all affectionately call the castle. Now it's no mansion, but from my low state of living it seemed like it. Somewhere between six to eight rooms, a pool, two living rooms, giant basement filled with a flat screen and pool tables and all that. My friend and I would always crash in the basement when we stayed Dover. Now it was close to Halloween time, so we just finished watching a scary movie and were called upstairs for dinner. I had just finished taking a particularly nasty dump, so I closed the bathroom door and ate like usual. When we came back down to the basement, the bathroom door was open. Because it was so close to Halloween we got all spooked and ran upstairs telling my mom. We closed the door, and it's open. So spooky I know. But her response was oh that's just Beacom. And told us his story. Beacom is the house owner's brother's imaginary friend from when they were kids. They made sure to emphasize that it was friendly, but whenever something moves, or doors open or close they just blame Beacom and laugh it off. So my friend and I went back downstairs terrified and for the rest of the night we kept watch on the doors to see if anything was different but sure enough if ever we both left the basement. When we came back one of the three downstairs doors was opened, we got into the habit of closing them all. My mom tried to scare us once with a wolf mask, which was more funny than anything. But anyway as we were going to sleep there are two half windows, I say half because they are smaller and lead outside, while we are underground if that makes sense and two couches. I lay on one and my friend lays on the other one, and from the way we're laying we could each see one of the windows. And on my window is a white face. 
It's very dark and hard to see, but it looks like three black holes on a white field that might just happen to make a face. But when I get up to look closer it moves away, almost like it's more of a reflection of light than anything else. I deliberately didn't tell my friend about it because we had had enough fear for one day. So two years or so later we are all talking about the scariest things that had ever happened to us, and of course Beacom gets brought into the situation. I'm listening to my friend tell the story and he ends with yeah that night scared the shit out of me. I never told you this but when we were sleeping I saw this super creepy white face looking at me through the window. But we could only see different windows. I lost my shit, and was never more creeped out. It's been some time since we've been to the castle but that story will always spook me. Was about 5 or 6. One night my parents and I were watching TV in the living room of our ranch style house in the suburbs in the Midwest. A stanger light coming from the hallway got our attention. In the bedroom at the end of the hall there was a one by one foot glowing orb of light floating about 3 to 4 feet from the floor illuminating the dark room. The orb seemed to realize it was being observed and moved very quickly and before we knew it the orb was outside like it had passed through the wall or windows. It then very quickly went around the house jumping or passing through two six foot fences in a matter of seconds. We saw it do this through the windows and our dog started freaking out. My dad freaks out and grabs his revolver and a flashlight and storms outside. It had rained recently and there was mud outside but no evidence of footprints or anything to rationally explain it. While the event is family legend now my mom thought it was a ghost or spirit, my dad thought it was aliens, and quite frankly I have no idea. I lean towards ball lightning but it seemed to have at least some level of intelligence and seemed to make deliberate, not random movements. The house I grew up during a large portion of my childhood was built sometime in the 1930s. It was pretty big, which was great for a kid like me who loved to explore. Problem was that all throughout the house I would routinely get this creepy vibe like as if someone were watching me. Or this overwhelming feeling that I wasn't safe and needed to leave particular areas. Now, it could have had just been an overactive imagination kids are definitely prone to having those. Problem was I wasn't exposed to scary movies or stories as a kid. I think my parents recognized how scared I would get by my own imagination, and couldn't even fathom how bad it would be to actually see or hear something. Still, even as an adult now looking back, there are two particular events which I can't possibly explain as being irrational. Both of them involved the basement, which I'll mention was primarily unfinished. To give a quick layout of it the basement was accessible through the kitchen or the main hallway, and was adjacent to the side door. It was unfinished, with hard concrete floors, and an area in the back that was mostly dirt. Going down the basement meant you had to take these wooden steps which had probably been there since the 30s. The first incident was on a weekend, my dad and I were sitting in the living room watching NASCAR, and during a commercial break he asked me to get him a beer. Unfortunately for me he kept his beer down in the basement in this little mini fridge, and I was already kind of scared of going down there. Not wanting to upset him by telling him no, I went for it anyway. Before I even made it to the steps I was already getting that feeling that I shouldn't go any further, and that I should immediately turn right around, but I kept going on. As I got to the basement steps that fear continued to grow and grow. You know that feeling you get when you can just tell that someone is staring at you? Like a fifth sense, your spine gets kind of tingly and you have this overwhelming feeling to look at in the direction, that's what I was experiencing tenfold. When I finally reached the bottom of the steps I was almost completely paralyzed with fear, I slowly turned my head to the left towards where the open dirt area was and said hello. As soon as I said the two red glowing orb things emerged from that dark part, I'd say they were eyes, but I can't be for sure. I didn't study them long enough before I ran up the steps as fast as I could. My dad must have heard my running and met me in the hallway, and asked what was going on. I told him about what I saw, and he immediately headed down there. I think he might have thought it was an animal or something, but after a few minutes he emerged with a beer in hand and telling me it was nothing. The second event took place a year, maybe a year and a half later. It was during the summer, and my family and I were outside, dad, mom, younger brother, and myself. I had to use the bathroom and headed inside using the front door, as I had refused to use the side door since that previous event. When I went to go back outside though I had the thought I'd try and be brave, and face my fear. I headed towards the side door, sat at the top of the basement steps, and waited. It didn't take long for me to get those same feelings all over again I shouldn't be there, something was watching me, I needed to leave immediately. 
I was truly tired of the fear though, I wanted to be brave and face whatever threat was down there, so I stayed. It didn't take long for me to run though, because as soon as I had made that determination I saw a shadow paint across the wall opposite of the handrail. It was human, looked male, seemed extremely large. No real fine details, again not enough time as I immediately bolted out the door. I told my dad about it, this time he seemed a bit more concerned. I didn't follow him into the house, but I did hear him racking his gun before he descended down. Just like last time though he emerged, nothing to be found. There were other events, but those were the two primary ones. I still have nightmares about that place too. They are always so odd too. Before they involved me being inside the house already and going down to the basement to face whatever was down there. That's ended though, and now I'm always outside the house, the weather is odd, like it's not sure if it wants to be night or daytime. I have this feeling like I need to go in the house and explore it further, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Till this day, I don't know if they were a series of fucked up dreams or if it was reality. But, when I was around 6 to 7 my family and I lived in a two-story house with all the bedrooms upstairs. My mum would always send me to her room to collect nappies, my brother had just been born, and of course, my parents' room was at the very end of the hallway. I remember I had this distinct feeling that I could never recall, I just knew it when I felt it. The feeling was a warning sign that it was coming. Don't ask what the fuck it was because I had no clue. When it was coming, I would get comfortable, lie on a bed or sit down, and close my eyes. I had to close my eyes though under no circumstances were they to be open. I felt like it was forbidden to look at it. It was a like a set of rules that I had to follow or else something would happen. I was too scared to question it. It would slowly come in, the feeling would grow as it got closer, and it would come from the hallway through the door. I felt like it was floating because I could never hear footsteps. It would literally just talk to me, like that's it. The subject would range from small talk to something extremely creepy, my mother's death. It would usually ask me questions like how was your day but I would never answer because, again, I was scared to death. At this point, I would wait and listen until I couldn't feel its presence anymore. Only then would it be safe to open my eyes and move. It was weird because I seemed to forget the experience until the next one. After it left, I would just continue on with what I was doing like nothing had happened. The only time I'd actually acknowledge it was when the feeling would wash over me and I'd realize that I fucked up by being alone. I really don't remember much, that one nappy experience always stood out though. Everything would kind of blur together, pretty much all my memories from then are like that, I only remember my thoughts and feelings at that time. A, I don't even know. I was 8 years old and my cousin was turning 8 the next month. This occurred in early August. To add some context to this event, my family own land. A few of my uncles built their houses on their property including my dad. My dad's house and my uncle's house are about 130 meters apart and in the evening the farm lights light up the dirt path between their houses. The event, I remember this evening so clearly, it was a warm evening, the sun had just set, the evening was calm, no wind or inclement weather. My cousin and I are walking back to my dad's house, we're talking and as we come about 50 meters close to my dad's house, this blinding white light flashed twice, we both just stood there. We were both silent standing there. We both looked at each other and said, did that just happen? We both freaked out and ran the rest of the 50 meters back to my house. We, both very excited by this event told my parents and his dad what happened outside but nobody witnessed this, as the curtains were closed inside. None of the adults believed us. They said nothing just kind of acknowledged us and continued visiting. The light wasn't accompanied with thunder because it wasn't lightning. The light was blinding, the acreage is located in the prairies. I don't know if there is any logical explanation for this event but ever since then I have always believed that maybe, just maybe it was aliens or some astronomical event. I know this sounds absolutely ridiculous to some people but my cousin and I don't try to convince other people what we experienced, because we both know what we experienced. Feeling alive, yes I am breathing the air and I'm feeling so careless